Welcome to Karam, the Small Steps Podcast, where we try to showcase individual perspectives of recent graduates about different pathways of life. I'm Himanj Bhatia. And I'm Arjit Singh. And together, we'll try to uncover what it means to have a traditional career. I'm really excited to bring on someone who is really close to me. A person whose best quality is not that she can be your friend, but that she will be your friend. I hope you all are just as delighted to hear from her as we are. So, let's start the show. Our guest today has aspired to be a lawyer since she was a little girl. But she has recently discovered the world to be a vast pool of opportunities. A person that is known to be nice to every other person she meets. She achieved her bachelor's in public administration from Auburn University. And during her time at Auburn, she served as the VP of International Student Organization, a customer service assistant, and has had several roles trying to please other people all around her. Following graduation, she worked as a recruiter at a national executive search firm. Please help us in welcoming to the show, Meg Tarly. Hey, Meg. Thank you, guys. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you for the beautiful introduction. That was very heartwarming, and I'm glad to be on the show with y'all. Perfect. Yeah, Arjun knows you quite well. Uh, he was the one who wrote the introduction. Yes. But I'm yes. sure he missed some stuff. So, um, you know, to start the show, what's an interesting fact about yourself that you'd like the audience to know? An interesting fact. So I have moved within 15 different states in America and just 15 different cities moved around so much because my parents weren't exactly sure. They came from Pakistan and weren't exactly sure what job they wanted to be in and just followed opportunity. So ended up moving a lot, but settled in Alabama. So I think that's the most interesting fact. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So Mehek, I mean, I know that, you know, you went into public administration, but I think you, what you've been mentioning is that you wanted to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Could you maybe touch up on that just to give the audience a little bit about your background and what you are doing, what you went into doing, or what you, what you mm-hmm. went into college wanting to do and how that, how that changed? Yeah. So ever since fifth grade, I've known I wanted to be a lawyer. And when I came into college, I came in with a political science history related major and thought that that's exactly what I wanted to do. I've known exactly what I want to do my entire life. But in college, I kind of had the little, like I thought a little bit about how maybe I could do a different major and still end up as a lawyer, but also have more options with that major. And public administration, public relations gave me that option, being able to take that class, take those courses, but also be able to apply it to law but any other field that I want to as well. So like that questioning of if I wanted to do law happened like sophomore year of college. And that's when I changed my major to public relations. So I feel like it was a good choice overall because I even knew then that I might be thinking of changing it in the future. And now I'm very glad that I did it because I'd be stuck on one route just doing law if I had stuck to political science and history. So when was the, when was like the first time that you kind of thought about even beginning to go into the law like degree or or like the field and how how did that happen Uh, yeah I that it was very early on it was like fifth or sixth grade I was arguing with the teacher about one of the test questions that I'd gotten wrong and I couldn't understand why I didn't get it wrong we went back and forth and he stopped me and he's like Meg you know what I think you should be a lawyer I think you'd be a great lawyer because even though your point is completely wrong, you've made me believe that I'm wrong. And so you can have that point back. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe this could be a career for me. And ever since then, like I've joined all the mock trial teams I can, the law academy teams I can, I can been to all the competitions. So I've enjoyed it a lot, but I feel like that was one phase and there's a lot more opportunities out there now. As you mentioned, uh, you were moving around a lot in your childhood, mm-hmm. um, you know, 15 mm-hmm. states over a few years and uh, I think law would still be considered a stable job as a child do you think it was subconscious trying to um, you know fit into a stable job like giving your life stability for your parents because again they were immigrants as you mentioned yeah, yeah. so you have that pressure of doing something you know that they consider stable 
So fortunately, I have fantastic parents and they have supported me in anything I want to do. And they've always thought of my happiness before, like expectations of the Desi community as well. I know that there's so much pressure coming from them. I mean, more than my parents, I feel like I've gotten pressure from other uncles and aunties I've known that have told me that, oh, I thought you were going to be a lawyer. Like, that's what you should continue to do. That's where your path is. So I feel like there is the whole, like, what is everyone going to say to you and like how you look in society? But what matters more is how happy you are and how happy your parents are with what you're doing. And if you're happy, if you're doing well, then your parents are bound to be happy for you. Going off of that, you mentioned the Desi community. Was that yeah. like very similar to what other people in the community were doing? Or like, did you hear your friends having like, you know, their parents tell them what to do and go to certain fields and and how or why do you think your parents were a little different? Um, did they have those conversations with you when you were when you were kids? I feel like a lot of Daisy parents out there have expectations of how they want their children to be. And like this might be kind of a bad thing, but my parents didn't really have any expectations going in. Like they didn't have any expectations of what they wanted to do themselves, like came here, worked in gas stations food places, stuff like that. So they had no expectations from themselves, much less their kids and what they expected them to be. I know like lawyers, doctors, engineers are so up there, but like, I feel like that was, a, cause they know the struggle, they know how hard it's been and they know like how difficult it is to do, to do something that you don't enjoy doing. So now that like they've seen us grow up and like seen our decisions, they know that I wanted to be a lawyer and I tried my best in it. And they still want me to complete it because since I've been little, that's what I've wanted to do. So they want me to have that sense of accomplishment. But I don't think my parents are traditional in the other sense, as in other Desi parents that are like, I have not been able to do this. So I want my kids to accomplish even more and now be a doctor or a lawyer or engineer. I know those are like the main things that people think when they want their children to grow up and do something. And especially right. in the Desi community, I know those are like the three big options. Definitely. So that did that did influence me like thinking that I want to be a lawyer, but the support my parents have given me throughout the years have helped me decide that I can do whatever I want and they'd be happy with me. That's awesome. So um as you mentioned, right, that your parents wanted you to do something that you love. And now that you are into I think public relations, yeah. Is that something you love? Communication, meeting new people, influencing new people is definitely something I love. But the route that I'm going to take, I am still unsure of. I know that I do want to communicate with people and help inspire people. But how I want to do that is still a mystery. We're figuring that one out. Well, it's about the small steps as we say here on the podcast. Yeah. So. yeah, just kind of going off of that too. Like, I know that you're you're one of those people that have always that has always been like a people pleaser. How hard do you think that is, if, if at all? Like, you know, I know that it comes naturally to you, but I feel like yeah. there will be times where you're just like, okay, you know, I'm done with this. Um, yeah. How is that yeah. being in a public relations major? How do you connect that to your life? Yeah. How do you connect that to the jobs that you've had? You know, yeah. pleasing people, of course, you know, whether that is recruiting, whether that is anything else that you've done. How do you connect yeah. all that? Well, the most important thing I think is being genuine. That's how I've managed to make most of my connections, honestly. Like just being the person I am has attracted so many people and I love it. Like even at work in Chicago, I only did that, like my recruiting job for six, seven months, but I made such long lasting relationships. People that have been there for a year and a half didn't make the relationships that I did in those six, seven months. And so it's just being completely open, not being fake about anything, which has helped me be closer with people. But also, yeah, it had like it had taken a toll at one point. I feel like so for these past four months, I was stuck in Pakistan and wasn't able to get back home. But it just made me realize the important thing is that instead of pleasing people, help like pleasing yourself, just being happy in what you're doing. So if I do feel now that I'm going out of my way to make somebody happy, if I'm not being my most genuine, authentic self to please someone, then that it's not worth it for me anymore. And so I feel like that was a hard realization to come to over the years, but I feel like I have now. So you mentioned Pakistan. I know that's your motherland, but was there any other reason now why you wanted to visit, like in a person's career? 
should we be taking breaks? So should we go on vacation? I think it's something that's definitely gone up. Uh, you, people have been more inclined to. But how do these vacations, you know, how do these help us? So what's your take on that? So my vacation was a lot longer than I expected. I went in for a month and got stuck for four months. So at that point, it just led to frustration and I was waiting to get back. But it's already shown me the productivity I have when I get back. Like that four months of break has made me work 10 times harder when I'm back. Like I know if I was here all this time, I probably wouldn't have accomplished the stuff I accomplished within two weeks of being back. Like I, I missed so much of everything that like, I started going back to working out. I started like cooking at home. We started fixing up the house that we'd been planning on doing. So like a lot of stuff has just been coming together because we had taken such a long break. I guess it was the mind refresher I needed. I think yeah. that is definitely something that a lot of people like him and Chelsea mentioned have, have started doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I do believe that, you know, some of it, of course, is coming from this pandemic as well. You know, it, yeah, some yeah. people that did not even maybe want to take those vacations have had to take vacations, you know, have had yeah. to take furloughs, yeah. whatever that might be. You know, yeah. in, in the first yeah. place, it does not always look like a positive thing. But mm -hmm. towards the end of it, I think yeah. people do realize that, you know, they've had this time for themselves. You know, they've You're had right. realizations right. where they're like, okay, maybe we can start businesses. Maybe we can do something that we've wanted to do for the past, you know, longest times. I mean, yes, that's yeah. a little bit more inclined towards the people that, you know, have been working for a lot longer than, you know, some of the fresh graduates that we interview have. Yeah, but I, yeah. I definitely think that that is something that, you know, benefits a lot of people in the long run. So thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. Agree. Going from there, if there is one thing that, it, you know, you could go back in time and change in college, what would that be? If, if, if there is something that you would have done more or if there is something that you would have changed or not done as much, what would mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. So like we talked previously about the people pleasing that I had in my system, I wish I had come to the realization earlier that my happiness is more important than that and that not everyone is worth giving time to. So as long as you're being genuine and doing your best, um, talking to people, how you feel comfortable, then if they're not interested in talking to you, that's okay sometimes. Like it, it's okay if you don't get along with every single person you meet, which I mean, I still have that inherently in me. It's a little difficult to get over that, but I feel like at the end, priority should be your happiness, your family's happiness, because that is at the end of the day, what's important to you. I really want to get to know about like public relations, as you say. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're networking with quite a lot of people and working uh -huh. in teams. Quite a lot goes into it, I'm sure. So, yeah. what's your favorite thing about working in a team or, uh, you know, working for public relations in any mm -hmm. sense? And like now that you are, I guess, in recruitment, um, yeah. what's your favorite thing about that? And maybe something you definitely don't like. Okay. So, I would say my favorite favorite thing is making those connections and meeting new people. Even as a recruiter, I would be on the phone with somebody and they'd be having a bad day and just having one conversation with them would change their mood as well as mine. So it just makes you see the importance of just having like one small conversation with somebody saying one nice thing to them and how it changes their mood completely. Um, also like the same thing about give, getting different experiences and like, getting different perspectives on everything. Like it's just diverse opinions when you work together as a team. So I've always preferred that, even though like people might not agree with me, I at least get some like ideas out of it. Things that I would either think are negative or positive, I'd be able to determine for myself because I do have those options. So I like really like having that wide, wide variety of people and different opinions. Um, and then what I disliked, um, I can't think of what I disliked about public relations. I was actually a very good major and I got to do exactly what I wanted to. I worked a little bit on like designing, like computer designing, stuff like that, um, website designing, and then a little bit on communication as well and writing as well. So I got to do all three together. I feel like it was a great major for me, honestly. That's yeah. awesome. So um, yeah. what comes to my mind is, you know, how often, I guess, you went against some of those perspectives that were being offered by some people at the company. And 
how do you see that as a skill? You know, how important is it to sometimes mm -hmm. challenge those those perspectives mm -hmm. that people are putting in front of you? And you know, they might be seniors. Yeah. I know that yeah. here in India, now that I'm back, um, I, yeah. I understand that it's a lot more about saying, okay, you know, you're you're you've been in this field for let's say five years and mm -hmm. so you've got way more experience than I'm I'm just nobody. So I can't really like talk yeah. back a lot of time. Yeah. Or that's yeah. how you know a lot of people perceive it to be. I think yeah. I'm ready to challenge that if I do take up a job yeah, in India, but I do wanna yeah. I do wanna see what you think um is your perspective on that. So I think challenge perspectives all you want. Like it's always great to like put up your point of view but just do it respectfully like i can't stress that enough the importance of respecting the other person's opinion and then placing yours there like will make them understand the validity of your argument even more like if you know exactly what you like exactly what you think but know how to phrase it properly and not make their idea look bad also like also say that yeah this was a good idea like i completely agree with that but if we had done this I feel like it would be a little better and like specific steps, have it organized, like know exactly what your argument is, but say it in a respectful way. That's honestly the most important. Even bosses are willing to listen to you, but nobody's going to want to listen to you if you're being rude about it. So again, like be genuine, be nice and things go your way usually. There you go. So, you know, you're talking about your relationship with bosses and like, mm -hmm. was there a mentor for you? Um, you know, a go-to mentor, basically, you had a question and was there to answer you. Um, did you have to travel the path alone and find your own answers along the way? Oh. Meg, it doesn't have to be one yeah. mentor, right? So I think yeah, yeah. where we're going towards with this question is, you know, within your life, have there been multiple mentors or within a job, do you see there's one mentor? How do you kind of find your mentors and how do you kind of go about that? So. Like I said, you know, is it is it one person for one job or is it, okay, this is my mentor for life or do you like keep growing with them? Um, how, how does that happen in your life? So I unfortunately am not connected to my previous mentor who was my boss. Um, I feel like he helped me in any situation I needed. I feel that I could approach him very easily. But honestly, for me, more than mentors, I connect more with my peers because I see that they're on the same level as me. Like we both come in with the same understanding and we both rise together. So I feel like I depend more on them and more on like the communication that we have cause it's natural and easy. Like I can talk to my coworker versus my adult and er, versus my um, boss and I can figure out a solution with us better because I am more willing to ask questions with someone my age with my experience. So I feel like just coming to that together has helped me even more. But again, my boss was very approachable, very easy to go to. Like the first month of me working there, I felt like I was going to be in tears. It was a very difficult situation. I was in a new state, didn't know anybody, barely knew the job. There were people shadowing me all the time. So it was a very nerve wracking experience. But I was able to talk to my boss the entire time who gave me confidence. My coworker, like I was telling you, was saying she's going through the same thing. So that really did help build my confidence. And yeah, I think mentors change, but you learn with them and help grow from them. Okay, so do you think with, with mentors being a little scary, it was a little hard to go to them? Um, would you say that's why you would think your boss was a little harder to approach at first or would you say that you know that that it's just easier to go to your peers because you're also kind of in a race with them right so you're, you're asking them oh what are you doing you know and 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 as soon as you get that answer you're like yeah. oh okay so maybe i should okay. learn that song um, as well you yeah. know or oh, wow. or you see it and you're like okay i'm on the right path now like we're doing the same thing so right i mean they're shadowing you too it's not just me i'm not the only one yeah. But um yeah. So I feel like being around my boss was scary at first, but again, once that connection was made, once we had some genuine conversations, like we got Chipotle together a couple of times. So once we did talk and get to know each other more on a personal level, I think approaching him about questions became a lot easier. Also, as well as my we so there were mentors in our um recruiting team. There were people that are associate recruiters and high up there that would help me with, with situations. And they made it a very big part of their team culture to 
go to movies, play dodgeball, get to know each other, go out to happy hours. So just getting to know my peers, but also my superiors, I was able to feel closer to them, comfortable asking them questions. And yeah, that's what made me feel more comfortable so, around them. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've worked for a lot of different people in a lot of different positions as well. You know, how has that shaped you? in a positive way, negative way, whatever it's going to yeah. be, but yeah. like, how long um, do you want to continue doing that? Just tasting different positions here and there, yeah. trying yeah. to find your place. When do you think you'll be like, okay, this is what I want, and I should just stick with it? And should that be for a person, like, just sticking with it? Yeah. Or should they just yeah. experiment? Yeah. So... In my mind right now, for these next two years, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to do a legal assistant job if I get the opportunity to and see if I want to do it. And if I enjoy it, then yes, maybe stick to that for the rest of my life. But again, I so I did this program in Florida um, a couple years back. It was a summer program for law graduates and people who are attorneys now. And we got to make a lot of connections. And a lot of attorneys told me that the traditional paths that we think of normally, like people going to law school and then right after that, getting taking the bar, taking a job as a lawyer and sticking with that, that's completely changed. People have the Juris Doctorate degree, the law degree, and are now opening their own nonprofits or opening event planning firms, opening their own businesses. So even people that have their law degree don't have an idea of what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. So they made it very clear that people our age definitely don't need to be worried about that because everyone's life changes. There's so many opportunities that we get exposed to. So it's not necessary for you to stick to one path your entire life. And if other attorneys are telling me this, I think we will be fine. We will be fine. <laughs> and that's pretty much that's pretty much the motto that we have here in the yeah. podcast, right? So no yeah. career is traditional. Everybody has a different yeah. path and you know, yeah. hopefully we all figure something out um, and, and, that, and that's okay. You know, it's not always yeah. streamlined and it doesn't have to be because that's how we grow. Um, so, yeah. you know, you mentioned the mock trial team and I know that you mm -hmm. were, you were in a position where you were also leading the team at a time. Um, mm -hmm. Can you maybe share a little bit about that and how, how there were some aspects of that leading that he liked and how you managed mm -hmm. the team and then um mm -hmm. was there times that it got tough and how you dealt with that oh definitely so it was actually a whirlwind there was a lot of um a lot of problems that happened right before i became the mock trial captain because that's exactly when they were splitting up the teams into a b and c and i was put in c team when i was expecting to be in a or b so yeah, I was on C team and my supervisor had told me that you can lead the team, but we can't decide if you lead the team. Only the students will decide that. And so I was in a room with a bunch of new mock trial students and I gave my speech about my experience and why I think I should be leader out of four or five other people. And they did select me, which is a great like proud moment. And I got to lead the team, guide them and do very well with that. But I had other commitments like the International Student Organization. I was the vice president, so I would be going to their meetings, organizing events, um, and I was a big part of that also. So just managing that had become incredibly tough, but it made it worth it when I went to the events, when I went to all the competitions and just did my best, memorized everything, was up at 3 a.m. studying what I'm going to say the next day. But I was just happy doing it. I was like, give me two more hours. I could do it because this is something that really interests me. So it was a very great experience. I got to teach a lot of people, learn a lot from them as well. And when it was time to let it go and focus on other priorities, I had to do that as well. So, you know, as you're saying it, I love the mock trial. It really seems that you love doing it. And yeah. then the question still comes, like, why did you not go for law and or at least why is there a doubt in your mind about mm -hmm. going to law because you, from my side i don't know you that much yeah, but yeah. like you're talking about it it seems like you really love doing that yeah. and so why not law so honestly mock trial was just one part of my college experience like i told you i was also part of the international student organization and just doing so many other things that i really enjoyed and now thinking that I would be doing law for the rest of my life and not just the fun parts of it, but also 
the hours and hours of reading for it, the staying up, completely devoting your life to it. That I'm not re- sure if I'm ready to do yet. And especially uh, the just hours of reading. I like I know I love it and I enjoyed it during mock trial, but we're given one case during mock trial that we study for the entire year. When you make law your career, you have a case every day and you have to study for it, read for it, do so much more than I could have ever done in mock trial. And I know that it's going to require that level of dedication and commitment. And I don't want to jump into something that I'm not 100% sure about. I know, especially with law school, the amount of money that will go into it as well. I don't want to do it for a year or two and then realize it's not for me. So therefore, doing the legal assistant job, maybe another legal secretary job and seeing if that's something that I really want to get into, shadow a couple lawyers and figure out if that's a life I see myself in. Yeah. So Meg, what's something you want to tell someone in the same place as you are? Or, you know, like, where do you see yourself, let's say in five years? Like, what do you want to not be? But mm-hmm. like, you know, there's like, there's people who are like, oh yeah, I just, I don't care what I am as long as I'm yeah. doing this or as long as I'm doing yeah. that. So what would yeah. that be for you? And um, what do you suggest for other people? So these past four months in Pakistan have changed my perspective on a lot. Um, I realized that I think the most important thing for me now and for me to even be in the future is have my family together and hopefully be doing something with my family. So my brother and I are now in America and we're without parents. And for the first time we're on our own and can show our parents how they've raised us and how much we can do together. So we've gotten into real estate and house flipping a little bit. And hopefully in five years, we'll have at least, so they started off with this one property. They gave us this one property and hopefully we'll be able to increase it. So in five years, I definitely want to be able to continue on at least what my parents have done for us. So hopefully have a couple more properties by then for sure. Um, And anybody that's in my position, my advice to them is, I thought I knew what I wanted to do since the fifth grade and turns out I was wrong. So even if you've known for sure that this is what you want to do your entire life, it's okay if things change, things are not going to go how you expected them. But the most important thing is to make the best out of the situation you have right now and just ensure your happiness. So if you're enjoying something and you're doing it, and even though that's not something you've always thought you wanted to do, if you're enjoying it, you should continue doing it because that's the most important. Yeah. Sounds exactly what I think we've heard from a couple other people and um, what we will, you know, keep hearing in the future as well. Um, Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Meg, for sharing that. You're welcome. No problem. Yeah, thank you, Meg. Um, I'm looking forward to see what you do in the future. So where can other people find you and, you know, actually follow you through your small steps? Uh, so I'm on every sort of social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Mag Yarley is my full name on that. Um, but definitely feel free to connect with me wherever. If you need any advice on anything, I'm here to hear it all out. All right. We'll share your contact info in the, the description as well. Um, okay. So this is your host, Heyman Shvadia. And Arjit Singh. And you've been listening to Kalam, a small steps podcast. If you found value in this episode, please like, share and subscribe. And as always, let us know how we can make this better. A traditional career is always untraditional. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.